Welcome to ATV TV. I'm Darren Dance here on Zoom with Peter Morganti. We're zooming in on a Friday evening at 6.30 Victorian time. We're late and it's my fault, Pete. I've been on the road all day, been up to Paul Prushka's and back and um, just got in. So for those who have been texting me, where's ATV TV? Well, better late than never. You might say that about some of our racehorses. They'll, uh, they'll be able to have a nice cup of tea with it after their tea, around about uh, 8 o'clock, I would say. We'll get it out. But, yeah, interesting week. Another uh, ups and, up and down week with the weather, Darren, but we're, uh, we've got used to it. Two days to summer, isn't it? No, five days to summer. Well, for those who don't live in Victoria, um, or where we live in Victoria, it's been yeah. cold and wet for weeks and weeks. And I see next week we're going to venture into the high 20s, might even crack the 30 degrees, and we'll all think we're dying if that happens because we will not be used to it. So I reckon a bit um, of humidity will pop up too. <laughs> and they're saying La Nina has just arrived. Well, I reckon it's been here since June. <laughs> so I don't know yeah. what they're talking about, but if it's going to get wetter than what it is now, my goodness, if you could see some of our paddocks, and uh, how lush and green and damp they are. And I think next week, with Peter, you're coming out to do some videoing and some photos of some yearlings. So yep. for all those people in those yearlings and um, haven't had much of a look at them, well, Pete's going to take care of that for you next week. I'll notice the difference too, Darren. I don't think I've seen them properly for four months at least, and it's amazing how much they would have grown. So... Uh, yeah, look forward to that. That's about 17, I think, to video or uh, video and photograph, I was going to say. <laughs> Take photos of, we'll get the website updated, we'll get all that vision out to the owners. So uh, look forward to that. Um, Busy week next week. Well, let's go through last week's runners. There was half a dozen, six or seven that went round. And yep. um, where do we start? I think we did, uh, we were uh, last week, I think we've seen Dandy Classic rat at Taranga. We mentioned her, and she's obviously uh, uh, heading to the sales. But we also had Miss 10,000 run a little bit later. She ran well. Um, I just think the tempo early in the race probably just didn't mean she finished off as strong as she possibly could have. And saying that, she's probably going to be better for that run over 2,000. Ran fourth, beating the length in a bit. Yeah, I think that's right. Um... Isn't it amazing? You know, you wait to get out to the right trip and then uh, they stack them up and sprint late. And then if you're back, you got no hope. So, look, she's probably done a good job to run fourth there, first up at the distance. Um, one would expect next start, um, you know, should be more conditioned to that. And we spoke regularly about the fact that horses that sort of get out and ground, um, it does take them a couple of runs to really hit their straps. Um, for some reason, it's just that aerobic condition. So I think she'll be right next start. Um, we probably just need a jockey that's got a bit of a clock on his head and is going to ride a little bit more positive, and um, she should be winning shortly. Yep. But it wasn't a bad run to run fourth. No, and I think we'll have another example of that 2,000 metre conditioning in a couple of horses' time with Street Baby. Serious suspect was at Ballarat, and um, he doesn't put in many poor runs, this horse, or disappointing runs, and... Uh, on face value, it was on Saturday, but then in the wash-up, uh, I think you'll report, Darren, that he he was a very sore horse or uh, stiff and sore horse when he arrived back at the farm and you got uh, Bruce, our chiropractor, over him, I think today it might have been. Um, so he'll spend six to eight weeks having a nice refreshed, a nice freshen up, should I say. Yep. Uh, look, obviously, um, we thought he, that was a perfect race for him at Ballarat Cup Day last Saturday. And even though he was probably around the $8, $10 mark um, and had 60 kilos, we thought he'd run really well. He was in good form. Coming off a very fast second at Flemington, but something's gone wrong in the run. Um, he's, he's obviously stretched or strained his back. Um, obviously, you know, the team was shattered. Um, to Saab's credit, he, he rang me after the race and said, well, I might as well just bring him back to you at the farm and no point taking him back up there. So he came home. He was here Saturday a couple of hours after the run and 
when you bring these horses home from training, it, you, you need to let them down for four or five days before you do anything um, with them at all. So, you know, and, and the weather was so terrible. We actually had to keep him in for a couple of days. Um, but, uh, yeah, we got our chiropractor who's been coming here probably weekly for the last 10 years to go over him. And he said, yeah, right along his back, um, he was just in a lot of pain. And for those who visit chiropractors, um, you know, when I say they run their hand down your spine or up your spine, and if you've got a sore spot, you certainly yell or flex. Um, horses obviously can't talk, but they normally start at the tailbone and work their way back up to the front to the wither. And I'd say when he got two inches up from his top of his tail, um, you run that hand along and um, yeah, they might twitch or flex a little bit, but when he got to that second vertebrae, the horse just wanted to drop to the ground. It was just in a lot of pain yeah, and just wanted to cave in under him. So he was able to manipulate him and um, and then you start to see all the blood rushing to the area of soreness. So we've unlocked that bit and uh, he'll get done now every week until we're happy with him, until he shows no reaction at all. So, you know, he's obviously had a fairly big excuse. So we've just given him a good break, get him right, and then we'll start again. So whether he's just landed awkwardly in the run or put his foot in a bit of a divot or just twisted the wrong leg. No one really knows. Um, you know, he did cop an awful check there in a straight when uh, the winner pushed through and maybe that's when he's just twisted and um, just hurt his back. But yeah, we'll do everything we can. One thing I will say that we weigh them when they come out, when they go in and he weighed 515 kilos, which is the, the you know, he was coming out of 480, 475 there last year and going in at around 500. So he's come out in great order and, you know, he'll probably go back in at 525. So, um, you know, we'll just do the right thing and we'll set him up for the autumn. Yep. He, uh, he's a horse that um, he hasn't had long spells. So uh, a bit of a force one, it won't do him any harm. He's, he's a young seven year old, I reckon, uh, serious suspect. To cheer her same day and uh, just mention, we had another horse stepping out to 2,000 in Street Baby. She loomed as the winner. The last 50 just got her. Uh, I, she was beat not more than the length. Um, running fourth, Bo Merton's on. Bo were, rode four winners for the day, so maybe we're up against it anyway. But uh, his ride was very good. She just, just failed to run the 2,000 strongly. You know, that's what we talk about often is uh, horses having their first go at 2,000. Uh, they rarely win. Um, and I remember, uh, you know, there's been a number of trainers, Robert Smurd and Darren Weir, they, they all say the same thing. But when, you, when you're going to 2,000 first up, it doesn't matter how much you train them, how many runs they've had. A lot of them, um, they need that run to just harden them up, condition them up. Something to do with the aerobic capacity. And um, they always... The second run's normally better than their first run over 2,000. And you could just see her flatten out late. Like you, I thought she was just going to win by how far on the corner. But uh, she needed that. And, um, you know, that's okay. She had a couple of runs for um, Andrew Bobbin and she's got a foot right in the till. And I think she'd be something to have a good, serious look at next start when she's having that second run. I also think Tatura, you know, she's a big, long striding mare. And, yeah, know, Tatura is a, not a big track. Um, so if we get her on a nice big track, good even surface and just let her travel and let down in a big straight and give her time to hit the line without panicking, um, she should be winning. Yep. She's certainly held a form for all the three runs. So the foot's on the till, as you said. Sunday we went to Swan Hill and uh, this was a disappointing result. It's just been a disappointing prep. And for a, a filly we had some hopes of, um, raise the colours. Um, she's got a few little issues. Um, and look, we've pulled up stumps with her. I think the owners know that, but she just, yeah, for whatever reason, there's probably a few maybe we deep seated issues we don't know about, but she just doesn't want to do it on race day. She wants to hang in when she's under full pressure. She doesn't want to give you 100%. No, there's obviously, um, yeah, look, she's shown a lot early. Um, she's never been the same since she ran the Oaks last year. Um, she ran up against Steinem that day and she was, I think she finished last and tailed off and 
I don't think she's been the same horse since. So I know there's the old trap of saying the raise the flags. Um, you know, they don't come good to those seven, but um, she's hanging badly, which says that there's something not right there. So picked her up today, um, just looking at her getting on the truck. She looked magnificent. Paul and Holly couldn't have had her looking any better. And, um, you know, it's just disappointing. But as all owners know, training, uh, racing horses is an expensive game. It's hard enough to win a race with a 100% sound horse, let alone one that's uh, got problems and you can chew a lot of money up. And um, as, as one owner said to me during the week that's in a, Darren, um, I don't really want to buy the race. Um, I'd rather have one that's capable of, um, you know, being competitive every start. So, you know, it is something, you know, as hard as it is to sort of say we've got to move them on. I think it's the right call. Yeah. Tuesday, Geelong, Choco Rock. Uh, we went there with a little bit of expectation on the back of his first really good run at Benalla where he hit the line hard. Um, again, we've found a horse with, he's got issues two ways. One, he's losing his manhood. And the other one, he's got a couple of knee chips that need to be removed as well. So he's a horse with tremendous ability and we keep getting the feedback from the riders and John McArdle. But uh, uh, he's, he's going to have to spend, well, at least two or three months, I suppose, post-operation next week to recover and um, hopefully we get him back and we can see the ability that we know he's got. He finished ninth after leading. Well, he's heavily backed into favourite. Um, he led, which was at the first surprise because um, we wouldn't really expect a horse like him to be leading in his race, but that, that just showed no one wanted to lead and he went forward. But look, we've known this whole prep that he's on and off. When he's off, he's really off. And when he's on, he's really good. And look, he's no doubt a Sunday city class horse, but he's a, he's a real boy and he's uh, not really focusing on his racing and um, yeah he just um, pulled up with this couple of little little minor chips there that can just be sucked out nothing major but if we're going to the, if we're going to have a break and go at him then it was worth just checking him over and yeah we found a couple of little chips that might worry him later on I don't think they're really worrying him now but better off to suck him out and move on just like an AFL football having a clean up at the end of the season and we'll get on it and to be honest, he reminds me of the next horse we're going to talk about because 12 months ago, this horse was doing exactly the same thing as a colt. And I think he had a chip out as well. Yeah. Um, sometimes they, and people say, why do you geld them? Why do you geld them? But if they're big and heavy and then they start getting little chips or flakes, it's showing that their body's not coping with carrying the weight. And if their brain's not in the gear, then they won't do their best. And um, I think this is a perfect example of a horse that um, raced at Sandown Wednesday for us, Pete, who looked the winner, Cracker Jack Prince, and run second. Um, but last prep as a colt, he was just going through the motions and, and you can really see the change in him now, can't you? Yeah, yeah. And it really, I th just diverting, uh, Lindsay Smith had a video out on the Palantino today and he actually stood the horse up and shows you where they get really thick through the neck and into the front of the horse. and. And that's where a lot of the pressure goes into to those front knees. And, um, you know, he's another one that we'll have to look at, you know, well before he starts his career, which could, um, you know, make, you know, take a lot of pressure off those legs and he can have a long career. But, yeah, Cracker Jack Prince, exactly the same example. And, you know, he's come back at a, a uh, well, he's run two really good races. Um, and Choco Rock, yeah. Just have to bide our time for another two or three months before we get him back into the system. And as you said, Cracker Jack Prince, um, well, I think the early crow could have got a bit of a workout at the 200. And uh, again, the early crow knocks one over. He got beaten in the neck, I think. And uh, look, he, he ran well, um, second up. So there's a bit of fitness to come after the run, but he gets his chance in a similar race in two, two or three weeks' time. And it's interesting that um, what I, I took um, a little bit out of what the winning trainer of that race, Brett Stanley, said when, you know, it was his horse that beat us by a neck. And we loomed up to be the winner, but you could just see the last 50. We just knocked up on our run. And, um, yeah, it would be, and he's a big, strong gelding and heavy, and, and he'll be better for that. 
Um, but when Brett Stanley was interviewed and he said, look, I thought my horse was a $2 chance. I thought he'd just go there and win easy. Yeah. And he said when the other horse loomed up, he thought, gee, I must be a bad judge. But his horse stuck his neck out and, and just beat us. And I think both those horses have got a future. And they may well end up developing into Saturday City horses, both of them. And yeah. Sometimes you look back on the... You look back on races a year or two later and say, geez, we're unlucky running to that horse on a Wednesday because it's just won a group race, you know, and it's happened to us many times. Um, at the time, you don't think, you know, you think you're disappointed that you got beat, but you, you don't actually know who you're running into often. And I know there was um, when Choco Ruck ran second um, at his last, previous start, um, Levi Kavanagh said, well, you know, we think our win the winner. We think he's a group horse, and here he is winning the, win the maiden. So history will tell, um, one, whether they're a good judge, and two, how good these horses are that we're running around against. We ran into one in Sandown earlier this year. I can't think of the name. It was something. It won by about seven. We had, I think we finished fourth and fifth in it and thought, well, geez, I think Pat Ryan said at the time, we just got knocked over by a group horse at a benchmark 64, and it ended up being one. I think it ran... I uh, might have ran second to the big horse behemoth in the in the sprint race in South Australia and then it come here as competitive in the early races. So, yeah, it's hard when you get beaten by them. But if you're going to get beaten by any horses midweek, the group or stakes place, it gives you some hope that your horse is okay. I think Happy Rock Prince is going well. And um, I think he's yep. in for a really good preparation. He's only had the two runs. So I think it runs three, four and five. Uh, this prep, if he stays sound, um, you know, he's, he's going to give those owners um, a big ride. Yeah, there's plenty of races at Sandown and Flemington right through the summer months, and, and he's a big track horse, so uh, yeah, he'll get his opportunity to to win a nice race. Um, so that's it, Darren. So we had Cracker Jack, Prince Street, Baby, and Miss 10,000. They're all, you know, off on the tilt. Um, obviously, Choco Rock Racer, Carlos Serious Suspect had issues in their racing. They, you know, they had excuses, and um, two were in the paddock, and one's been moved on. We're building up a list. Oh, yeah. We're building up a list of placings, Darren. There's thirty odd there, I think now. <laughs> well, can we, can we do something? We've got a couple of short price ones here. Looking at the run sheet, so yep. Well, I'll lead you um, in. We start a We'll kick off with a real nice filly, probably um, yeah, well, easily one of the better horses in our in our care. Uh, Steinem, Group Three. I don't even know the name of the race, but it's a Group Three mile. We're finally drawn a barrier. She ran a bottler at Caulfield two starts ago behind Colette, which that form alone just stands out. And obviously in the Group One Empire Rose. Um, she was about four suburbs from the leader when they settled and ended up being beaten three lengths. So uh, hopefully from gate five, I want to see at least four or five horses behind her in the run, Darren. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I know she's drawn five, but I must say um, every run she's been in, she's been out the back. And they say tomorrow she's going to be midfield. I don't know how they're going to do that, but your mate, Joy McNeil, retains the ride. <laughs> Old one-dimensional Joy. So I hope he watches and I hope he proves me wrong. But um, I'd love it. I'd love it. I'd love him to, tomorrow to end up in pairs. I'd, I'd love it to be in a race where there's pairs, you know, two, yeah. two, 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 and then all sort of either two pairs on the outside or three pairs back on the outside yeah. rather than be in and, or five wide and push into ten wide on the bend and giving away half a dozen lengths and getting beat two. It'd be just nice if um, she could sort of get a nice run and get the run when she needed the run rather than being dictated to and not left with, with trying to make up ten lengths. Now, this is a group three race, which um, there's probably only three real chances on paper in this race, and the rest are probably going to... 64 races next start if they don't win. So, yeah, $3.20 favourite, best bet of the day in a lot of books. Um, I think, um, you know, 
it's going to tell us a lot about this horse tomorrow. And, um, you know, fingers crossed, she gets a good, clear run and she gets every chance to be right in the finish. She's two lengths off from Darren on the home turn, line up. She was, there's no horse that could have a sprint like hers. And she gets a nice little weight relief off one of the, the top weight. Um, yeah, hopefully we can see the real Steinem and she uh, will tick off a, a a race that we, you know, will add so much value to her. She's a valuable mare now, but we can get this race out of the road. And, uh, hey, she might be a candidate for the All-Star Mile, Darren. Mile horse. There's an $8 million race. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody joking. Okay. Where is the All-Star Mile this year? It's the Valley, isn't it? Does it move around? I don't know. Hmm. No, it might have been there last year. <laughs> and, uh, to be honest, I know it's worth a lot of money. I hope we never have to go through that again. No, no, absolutely not. Uh, right, uh, let's move on. So, same day, we've got Let's Get Serious at Yarra Glen. Lovely Yarra Glen. Um, 1,950 metre maiden. So, I'm sort of a um, little plan because it only obviously ran there. Oh, what was it, 10 days ago? I can't remember now. 10, yeah, Monday week ago. And he wanted to get her out, get him out to 2,000 at least. Well, here's his chance. Uh, Brian Higgins rides. It's a little wide, the barrier. But, um, yeah, we just want to see this horse hitting the line. Um, probably a top four finish would give us uh, the confidence to push on with the horse. I don't think you want to be sitting out, tailed out, out the back. You don't want to be beating eight or nine links and not doing much. He, he ran a better race last time. And he, and he was okay with mine. Um, but obviously, he just lost the race the distance. Um, this is an inferior race. Steps up in distance, but based on our earlier comments about horses tackling 2,000 for the first time, mm. he, he may get tired late. Um, but um, look, we just want to see him run a nice race and give us a little bit of hope that maybe next time over 2,000 he's a winning chance. So, uh, yeah, we, we'll certainly be watching for him to run top four. Yep. Sunday, I'll uh, put on the race day clobber. Doesn't happen very often. Do you remember, do you remember what you have to wear? Oh, do you remember well, how to get there? Yeah, get me on his badge from somewhere and... Uh, it's a couple of hours from home and, yeah, it'll be different. But going there to see a full book of horses anyway, the Pat Ryan's loaded up four. Um, I think we're in races two, uh, three. The big Jerry, the big Jerry Co. Day. Yeah. Well, that was originally we are going down there to watch Cracksman, but those plans went out the window. And, uh, anyway, Pat's done the right thing. And we've got four in. Uh, I think races two, three, six, and nine. So it's a day out. But I know there's quite a few owners going, so I look forward to that. We'll kick kick off with Intense, the big staying type. I don't know. You won't know which way they've gone. I know Pat hasn't. I think it's more a trial. It's, it's only 1,200 metres. So we're trying to hook onto the back end of one and see if we can drag you through the line. But um, barrier 15, he'll go around. Michael Poy rides and uh, he'll just get some fitness out of this. Yes, well said. An Irishman is in the following. <laughs> an Irishman's in the following race. Now here's one of our legitimate chances for the weekend. He uh, similar race to last time. It's just out to seventeen hundred metres this time. Michael Poy, gate one worries me a little bit, but then I thought, well, he's going to race on speed anyway. Um, so whether he leads or whether he lets something gets around him and then he pops off the fence, I'd be hoping. Poi does that because you don't want to be bottled up on the fence because being Jericho Day, there's going to be a little bit of extra water on this track for these stone races and um, I think I don't know whether the fence will be the right place. So if he can sit outside the leader, and that's what he did last start and um, almost got away with it. Horse is going well by all indications from the trainer so I think it's a $3 chance I wrote on that bit of paper, Darren, round about. Now, you'll be on course. Yep. So I feel more confident the fact that you're on course because you'll be reminding these people that every time we lead a warn on the fence, we get run over because the fence is not the fast lane. We've got three horses that could do that. 
And given that they pump and water on Dort for Jericho Day, I'd strongly suggest you tell them to get off the fence. Yeah, so I think... Anyway, um, that will be really important. Now, um, look, he's, he's obviously clearly the favourite in this race. He's probably the horse to beat. Uh, barrier one, yeah, I would have liked five or six. But anyway, he's probably going to lead. He's probably going to be on the fence, whether he can navigate a path one or two off the fence. But um, that'll, that'll be down to your tactics. <laughs> and um, I wouldn't really rely on Pat Ryan to have any idea on it, but, you know, he's just a jump jockey at the end of the day, right? He's an ex jump jockey. He's fallen on his head a few times. Um, you've got to make allowances. But on, in a serious note and a sad note, Pete, um, one of the owners um, we found out this week passed away last month, um, John Knowles. Yep. Uh, been a long-time client of ATB for probably the best part of 15 or 20 years. And uh, a lovely man, real gentleman. Um, bit of a wild boy back in his younger days. Um, he spent his whole life working in um, that sort of shipping freight industry um, down on the down on the uh, ports there. Um, I'm not sure really what his job was, but I think it was around, you know, organising freight um, and shipping. But I uh, had many, uh, many a funny days at the races and at uh, lunch with him, particularly um, probably in 10 years ago or further. And, uh, you know, we pass on our condolences to his family. We've spoken with his daughter this week and we're, we, we're hoping to run with a black armband on Sunday for an Irishman um, in memory of John. But... Um, I want to share one story with John Knowles and it's a story he told me many years ago and, and, and the people that know him will know and remember this, that um, they, were, they were in Darwin um, for a work, well, it was called a work conference, not that any work got done. And um, they, were, um, they were all in this one hotel and they were all around the pool drinking and uh, they were giving John a bit of a hard time because he wasn't drinking fast enough. So John being John decided he'd get even with them. They went back to his room and got his suitcase and he, and he snook out down the town somewhere and he came back with a little friend in his suitcase and he sat it next to his deck chair and they said, what are you doing, John? He goes, oh, I've just keeping an eye on my case. And he waited they all got in the pool and he opened the case and inside it was a medium sized crocodile and he let it rip in the pool. <laughs> and he said, you've never seen 30 blokes <laughs> walk on water, swim <laughs> like torpedoes and get out of that pool in 30 seconds. <laughs> and this crocodile swimming around. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> at the end of the day, they all got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> they all got told to leave the hotel. But that was the sort of bloke he, he was, and he was a ripping guy. And, um, Good fun. Came along as a real gentleman, but oh, he was a naughty boy, and he had <laughs> many stories like that. But you can imagine on a Sunday afternoon, all these guys that had probably 15 drinks, half asleep, <laughs> having a swim to cool off, and next minute, he's just a crocodile swimming around. Oh, <laughs> he said, it, never seen blokes move so fast. <laughs> he loved yeah. it. He well and truly got funny back. Man. No, well, he's a good man. He was a good let, man. So let's have an Irishman get the job done for him. Absolutely. John might have something to say about it up there as he's looking down and get him across the line. It'd be a great result. And um, condolences to the family. Um, uh, we have Unassailable uh, in, I think it's race six. We were mentioning off air. She's eight dollars down off the back of a second at um, Mooney Valley behind a really smart one. Um, it's a fillies and mares. I know it's a benchmark 70. Uh, geez, you couldn't help but think she's going to run a race. At, and at that price, she must be $2.60 to place. Like, that would be just a take. There's only about 10 in it. Theo Nugent stays on. He's ridden a really well all prep. Um, she's a great winning chance. Well, I'm surprised. Um, it's a fillies and mares. seventy. Um, the favourite is um, one of Wilds, one of Rue. Only won one race. Uh, won a race at Warner, won a field of six. 
Um, yeah, won it by four lengths, so maybe it goes okay. We're nine bucks now. Uh, they haven't put the place odds up because they're going to get smashed. I think they're just fishing at the minute. Uh, yeah. Lindsay's got one in there you might know. Lindsay Smith's got a thing in there by Keeper called The Keeper. Um, its form's not too bad. It's run top three a lot. Ran third at Sandown last start. Yeah. I don't know if its form's better than ours, but, um, gee, you know, we've only got 56. Super run at the Valley. I thought it, I thought we'd be favourite. I honestly did. So whether that $9 stands up or not, I don't know. But oh, I think she, she, ran, she ran really well to jump the broom, who I think is a really, really progressive horse. And we did all the work in that race, Darren, at the Valley. We worked. We sat outside the mm -hmm. leader. And, I mean, we're going to be on pace in this race. Uh, she, they've got to catch her, I think. Yeah, well... Once again, I, wouldn't, I don't want to see her on the fence, but 1,200 fillies and mares, benchmark 70, only 56 kilos. You know, geez. Uh, yeah. I think she's well placed. Yeah, great each way chance. And obviously, too, we're, we're aiming at that city win with her, and this is sort of, there's not much on the calendar, and this is a bit of a, um, you know, keep her up to the mark type um, run. But, yeah, no, she's got to be a great chance. Uh, move on, Madam Mischief's in the final race. Uh, she's been very consistent with three thirds at her last three starts. Loves Warnable. She does step out to fourteen hundred. Probably a little bit stronger race than the last couple. She's drawn eleven, so just a couple of things there. I know she pings the gates and she'll put herself on speed, but um, she'll run her honest race again. It's going to be that final hundred metres. Yeah, well, she's fourteen hundred, um, seven fifty-eight dollars. Barrier eleven is not ideal, but did I see there's already one out? Oh no, that was an outside horse. So coming out eleven is probably the problem because uh, she does lead and needs yeah. to lead. Um, so she'll probably go to the, yeah, she'll go to the front. That's her that's her style, and hopefully they sit off her and let her get away. But I don't know if you realise the, the where um. We're seven. Well, we're eight bucks, and the two equal favourites are seven dollars. Yeah. So it's in other words, wide, they got no clue. Wide open. They got yeah. no clue. I think so Dan, Daniel like, Bowman's <laughs> throw, throw a throw a dart. Like no one yeah. knows who's going to win this. Anything could start favourite on the day, but um, think, yeah, it's a very open race. So I think it's all the ball. Your last, I think. It's all the Warnable horses, Darren. I think Bowman's about a number 11. Ours, Lindsay Smith's got one, Mr. Razzle Dazzle or something like that, or Razzle something. And I think Wilds have got one. I think they're the four, aren't they? Yeah, Wilds have got a couple in it. Yeah. In the market, Paddy Mack, and the last he missed. Bobbins, he's as rough. Archie's as rough. Um, yeah, Wilds, equal favourite. Yeah, Smith, but... eight bucks. Dabernick, 12 bucks. Mitch Freeman, yeah, they're all there. All the, so it, it, all the names. I think yeah, Daniel... It's, it's just, but, a, just an open race. Yeah, and look, again, if uh, you're an on-speed horse, you make your own luck. So hopefully she can get there without doing much work and, you know, she'll give the owners a run for their money again. Um, that's, sun, that's Sunday. Uh, Monday, we go to Kyneton where um, our Frankel filly, frankly, Rosie, has her second start and... Well, I think we, we knew an hour right after that run that uh, the 1100 ran off a of feet. We're out to 1450 metres. I think we get a bit more of an idea now with um, you know, that hectic tempo out of the race. Hopefully, she can just settle and uh, hit the line nicely and we can learn a little bit more about her. Yeah, so she's drawn 10, which is not ideal at Kite neither, is it? No. I think they get, a, they get a run there from that shoot. But, um, yeah, look, you, you're going to have to either go back or do a little bit of work to get into a spot. Maskeel stays on, which is one thing. He did get a bit of a feel of a first start. Not that uh, not that he would have got much of a feel because he was riding her up from 600. But if you listen and listen to Liam, he thinks she's got good ability. Well, it would want to start to start showing now as we get out and trip. And that's her home track, Darren. Yeah, we trains up there, and Maskell's been in good form. So, 
look, obviously she got run off her legs. She was at the top the whole way and couldn't couldn't really finish off at all. So I think if she's going to be handy, she, she'd want to be going pretty good in this race. And on, on a trial, she's done some good things. So, yeah, you know, maybe she's a prep away. Maybe she's not ready, but maybe this is education. But we'll find out closer to the event. Certainly, you know, there's going to be no rain, so the track's going to be fine. And yeah. I think we'll get a good look at her. And that Kitan track, that, it never gets firm. Like, it's going to have real nice toe in. So, uh, I don't know where they are. It was a bit firm last time. But, yeah, look, um, I just like the fact that he's pushing around and trip quickly now. We start to learn a bit more. Some nice chances there. I think the obvious multi for me is Stein him into an Irishman. And if you like unassailable, for, like, I mean, you're getting... Must be two dollars sixty a place there, and to be fair, I thought she would have been not much better than that for the win when we were thinking about going to Waterloo. But yeah, well, I think the three you take in the multi played are Steiner, yep, an Irishman, and unassailable. I think yep. you have to take that as three, and then if you're brave, throw him out of mischief. She always runs well, so. Yep. The others are probably, you know, the others are, uh, um, you know, they're probably looking seas at the minute, either resuming or, or will need the run or need yeah. to show a bit more before you start diving into them. But that's right. I think there's four horses there. Um, I think there's four there that I would think would run a place. Um, there's probably a couple there that are, you know, winning chances. So I think it's going to come down to tactics. I will be concerned about one of all. We do need to stay off the fence. Um, so I'll, I'll see how you, how you manage that on the day. I'll do my absolute best. I'll take a stick with me, Darren. <laughs> but it'll be a great story. Obviously, Steinem and, 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 and obviously, as we touched on for the Niles family, it'll be a great um, reason for a little bit of smiling if an Irishman can do the job for them as well. It'll be a perfect outcome. Yep. All right. Well, we don't have a lot more to talk about, Pete. So um, we, I reckon we should just wrap it up there. It's uh, 7.05 on a Friday night. And uh, let you put this together and get it published. And um, we'll cheer Steinem home tomorrow at uh, Caulfield. And um, you'll, you'll do us proud down at the Bull. And um, until next week... Um, We'll soldier on. And as I said earlier, you'll get a lot of videos and photos this week from the farm. Um, so we'll look forward to Pete doing all that. And um, I guess on that note, until next week, I'm Darren Dance with Peter Morgandy. Have a great weekend. <laughs>